The first week or two of a new graphics architecture launch is the most exciting. After all, we expect these new flagship GPUs to redefine the performance of the bleeding edge. But there's a problem, of course, and that is these flagship cards are at a price point that most folks either cannot or will not be willing to pay. So, NVIDIA launching cards such as the GTX 1660 Ti and the RTX 2060 was all but inevitable. My name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Zedicon video, we're going to be investigating which of these two cards is the better purchase, and also comparing them against the GTX 960, so you can see just what type of an upgrade you're going to be getting if you have one of these older GPUs. Before we proceed, know that the RTX 2060 and the GTX 1660 Ti were sent to us by MSI for review purposes, and the system that we used for testing, an i7-8700K, was loaned to us by Overclockers UK. You can find out more details for OC UK linked in the video description. However, since then, the products have gone back to their respective owners. And of course, all opinions are our own. Unfortunately, my on-camera segments of this video are needing to be re-recorded. I was originally holding the cards and boxes and other bits and pieces, but unfortunately that SD card seemed to have gotten corrupted. I transferred the files before I went to the United States, but the footage ended up garbled. The first few moments of each clip were fine, but after that, not so much. Uh, the good news is that all of the packaging shots, the, car the shots of the card and all that stuff, uh, is fine, but my on-camera segments are needing to be recorded, so just be aware of that. So let's start things out with the obvious comparison. The GTX 1660 Ti versus the RTX 2060 in terms of the raw specifications. Both the RTX 2060 and GTX 1660 Ti use the same Turing architecture, but the GTX 1660 Ti lacks the ray tracing cores and also the tensor cores present in the RTX 2060. While the absence of the RT cores isn't a big deal, it's possible that DLSS may be missed on the card, especially as more titles come out which support uh, this technology and it improves. More on this later. Because the GTX 1660 Ti is Turing-based, simultaneous integer and floating point operations, improved cache, and all of the other bits and bobs are present and accounted for. As for the specs, the RTX 2060 and 1660 Ti both use GDDR6 in a quantity of 6GB with the same memory bus, 192 bits. Albeit, the GTX 1660 Ti has a considerably slower memory speed, 12 Gbps compared to 14. We did, however, manage to crank the memory clocks up to the same speed as the RTX 2060. Clearly, your mileage may vary, but I'm surprised if you wouldn't get at least 1000 more megahertz out of the RAM. Shifting to the core, we have 1532 CUDA cores versus 1920, with the same number of ROPs. The core clock, though, for the GTX 1660 Ti is typically a little higher than the RTX 2060. Reference design figures for boost are 1770 megahertz, versus 1680, so that gives a 90 megahertz advantage to the GTX 1660 Ti then. We noticed similar overclocking potential for both GPUs, with our models around 130-150 megahertz. NVIDIA are very happy to target the GTX 1660 Ti towards gamers who have kept their GTX 960 card since its launch in the early part of 2015. NVIDIA claims that two-thirds of gamers have a GTX 960 performance or less. NVIDIA does claim that we can expect between two and a half to three times the performance increase over the old GTX 960. Well, gosh, there's an easy way for us to test that, isn't there? That's right, you run these tests on your own GTX 960 and then you can compare them to our tests. Oh, what's that? You expect us to do that because that's kind of our job. All right, fair enough. We actually have our own GTX 960 that we can use for these very tests. The only caveat to our GTX 960 testing though, that is that our model is a 2 gigabyte variant. There are variants of this card which double this amount, and clearly a GTX 960 with 4 gigabytes of VRAM would run certain titles a little differently in 2019. We suspect that in most, not all cases, when you start to run into VRAM limitations, such as because of resolution or quality settings, you'll also have the limitations of actual processing performance as well. There are a few exceptions to this rule though. 
Games which love VRAM, such as Batman Arkham Knight, could be the exception. So it's just something to keep in mind as we proceed. We'll also be using non-reference clocked versions of both cards, with the boost frequency of the 2060 being 1680 MHz compared to the 1830 we see in the Gaming Z variant from MSI. And the Gaming X GTX 1660 Ti has similarly raised clock frequencies, 1875 MHz for the boost versus 1770. The RTX 2060 Gaming Z has an 8-pin power connector, no SLI connector, just like any 2060 on the market, a dual fan design using the Torx 3.0 technology, and this means that the fans do not spin when the GPU is under low load, the free display port and a single HDMI, oh, and RGB support. The configuration for the Gaming X is pretty similar, with the same fans, a single HDMI port, free display connectors, no SLI, and the GPU also demands a sacrifice for one of your 8-pin power connectors. With all of that out the way, let's look at the results, shall we, given that that's what really matters. So then, conclusion time, what's the better option, the GTX 1660 Ti or the more expensive RTX 2060? Well honestly, the GTX 1660 Ti makes a very compelling case for itself. The RTX 2060 is faster without question, but one can make a very compelling argument that by the time the GTX 1660 Ti starts to really struggle in games, the RTX 2060 is probably not going to fare that much better. But in the short term at least, you certainly could have a slightly higher minimum frame rate and also, the RTX 2060 may allow you to play at slightly higher quality settings. As for NVIDIA's claims regarding the Turing's performance versus the GTX 960, it's accurate. The 960 in our test gets routinely trounced by the newer cards. The only caveat here, of course, is that the 960 2GB model cost just 199 US dollars compared to the 280 or so US dollars of the GTX uh, 1660 Ti. Bit of a controversial statement I'm about to make, but I think that the real win for the RTX 2060 is also the fact that it supports DLSS. The early implementations for DLSS were not ideal, we saw a very soft image quality, but it is starting to improve over time. I guess you could say it's NVIDIA's fine wine. The biggest issue between these two cards is actually the pricing. The cheapest RTX 2060 is about 70 US dollars more expensive than the cheapest GTX 1660 Ti. This means that if you're buying any of the custom AIB variants that have higher clock speeds, generally they run like $20 or $30 more expensive than the basic GTX 1660 Ti, which essentially means that those GPUs, to me at least, are pointless because I'd rather cough up at that point the extra 30 or 40 bucks and pick up an RTX 2060. Now, of course, you can make a the argument that you can overclock the GTX 1660 Ti, particularly the memory, and it does 
go a long way to make it pretty much the same speed as the RTX 2060, but then you can make that exact same argument with the RTX 2060. So once again, if you have the extra cash in your pocket and are considering buying one of the more expensive GTX 1660 Ti's, I would probably just advise you to pick up a base model RTX 2060 instead. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, then normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe, because that helps out a ton. You can also find us on the social medias, which of course are linked down below, along with Patreon and Amazon affiliate links. So if you do fancy buying one of these GPUs, if you use one of those links, it does help us out by giving us a few pennies, and of course does not cost you anything more. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.